Another crypto company just declared bankruptcy. This time it's Celsius, which if you're thinking, sounds like deja vu, I'm sorry, you're not in a Denzel Washington movie. This is unfortunately the actual cursed timeline where for some reason the summer trend isn't socks and Crocs, it's billion dollar crypto companies going bust in the worst financial recession of the decade. Now, some of you guys might remember just days ago, I reported on Voyager declaring chapter 11 bankruptcy. And today the story is that Celsius said, I'll have what he's having, but with a twist. Instead of a chapter 11 bankruptcy, which sounds bad, Celsius filed for chapter 11 protection and financial restructuring, which just means that they're bankrupt. It means the same thing. It's kind of like when I was in high school working fast food, I told people, I'm not a fry cook, I'm a thermal food engineer, but it didn't change the fact that I was serving fries. You know, now that I think about it, me in high school and Celsius, the billion dollar company, have more in common than I thought. Uh, we both are broke and don't want to admit it. Boom, roasted. And the point that I'm trying to make is that Celsius is doing the same thing that Voyager did. In fact, they're doing it down to the T. They actually hired the exact same lawyer that Voyager did, according to their filings. That's right, Sussberg is back. And honestly, he's kind of becoming my mortal enemy at this point. It's like his bat signal is whenever people lose money and his superpower is arguing that they never owned it in the first place. I mean, this is honestly what these companies are doing, what these lawyers are arguing that the customers never owned the crypto that they bought in the first place. They were just lending it out for some reason. And I would love to talk you through chapter 11 bankruptcy and why Celsius does not qualify because they've clearly sold securities according to state regulators, but that's not really the point of this video. As I said, we've done that before and I don't wanna do it again. Instead, I wanna focus on the uniqueness of this case and the unique ways that Celsius has screwed over investors. So with that in mind, let's talk about HODL. You might have heard this term before, actually. Crypto bros say it a lot, and it means hold on for dear life. It's a way of encouraging people not to sell their crypto at a loss. And it turns out Celsius loved this, and they leaned into it. They had something called HODL mode in their app. Basically, it was a way for investors to put a child lock on their accounts, basically freeze it for at least 24 hours. And Celsius pushed this a lot to customers, not just early on, but after they suspended withdrawals too. That's right, after they froze people's assets, they asked people to freeze their own assets. According to reports, they were pushing engaging HODL mode as a sign of support for Celsius during these dark times. Now, to be clear, this is a bit like asking a guy you just put in jail to voluntarily handcuff themselves to the bed right afterwards. I mean, nobody's getting out anyways, but Celsius's argument was, hey, we can unfreeze withdrawals if you guys just all freeze your accounts voluntarily. I mean, this really was their logic. We can't go bankrupt if you guys never withdraw your money. <laughs> And maybe this is just a testament to how desperate their community was that a lot of people even bought into this, although some saw it for what it was. But the ironic thing is, despite pushing HODL mode all the time, you know someone who didn't actually practice what they preached? Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Celsius. That's right, guys. In a move that no one saw coming, the C-suite turned out to be hypocrites. It turns out that according to a report by Arkham Intelligence, which Yes, is a Batman reference, but is no less a made-up name than CoffeeZilla, so I'm not gonna make fun of it. At least it's not Sussberg or something. But anyway, Arkham Intelligence released a report about Alex Mashinsky, and they showed that he had a pattern of pumping and dumping Celsius tokens while telling people publicly that he was hodling them. In fact, Alex tweeted about this in October of 2021. Lots to celebrate here in London, Busy week with lots of deals and events, it pays to hodl. Now it turns out that same day, Alex sold $69,000 worth of crypto. Whoops. Two months later, more of the same. Quote, all Celsius network founders have made purchases of sell and are not sellers of the token. Now, mysteriously, this non-seller of the token, Alex, this hodler, managed to sell $16 million worth of Celsius all while telling his fans that he wasn't selling. But maybe even worse than Alex profiting from what may have been a profitable company was the revelation that Celsius 
may never have been profitable at all. Turns out, according to insider leaks, they were actually really bad at making any money at all, which gives more credence to the Ponzi scheme claim that we've been hearing a lot. And I know sometimes you guys accuse me of being the one to say Ponzi scheme this, Ponzi scheme that in crypto, which, you know, recently I have been saying a little bit because there's been a lot of Ponzi schemes. But this time it's not me saying it, okay? This is the head of DeFi staking at Celsius that just accused Celsius of being a Ponzi scheme. He just got revealed. His name is Jason Stone. And the reason he revealed his identity is because he just sued Celsius. Like I said, in his court filings, he calls them directly a Ponzi scheme. And guys, this is the head of DeFi staking. There's no one bigger than this guy who could like give a more insider take than the head of DeFi staking. He's the guy saying, hey, they're not actually making the money. Now, look, I'm not going to say Jason Stone is some altruistic guy here. In the lawsuit, he's clearly looking to be paid, not to mention it does appear that he got some like NFTs from Celsius in the form of like a paycheck. So his judgment must be questioned on, on that account alone. But his story does kind of make sense, which is basically the argument that Celsius was not profitable, which is something we've heard time and time again. And it's the argument that even when they knew they weren't profitable, they continued to market high rates of return as a way of getting more investments into their system to pay out the first investors. And then they told these new investors to lock up their money in the Celsius system with this HODL mode. All the while, the founder sold off for millions. So for all of those reasons, I'm out. And the lesson of the story today is that, well, sometimes it doesn't pay to HODL.